Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and I know it might seem a bit early to start talking about the Japanese beetle. My roses are just putting on their leaves. Some of them are starting to put on their earliest of flower buds now. Uh, but later in the season, June and July, they will be a problem in our gardens. And this is a good time to talk about it because their grubs are busily chewing away at your turf grass roots right now, causing some damage. And by the time they emerge into your garden, there are some things you can do to prepare your yard for them. And so I wanna talk about those today. For some of my viewers, the Japanese beetle will need no introduction. You've seen them in large numbers in your garden and you've seen the kind of damage that they can do. I'm gonna show you some pictures now. They are a metallic looking beetle and they just skeletonize plants. They chew up the flowers, they chew up the leaves, and you can see that on the leaves uh, from the pictures here that they just chew between the veins and just leave just the shreds of the plant left over. They can cause massive damage. They have some favorite plants. One of their favorite plants of particular interest to me is roses, but they also love grapes, they love hops, they love hydrangeas. Uh, all sorts of trees and shrubs. So let's talk about their life cycle for just one second because this will be of interest in how you control them. They live for 11 months of the year or just about 11 months of the year underground in their grub stage chewing at the roots of your grasses. Uh, then they emerge and they are only out for about a four or five week period. Um, 40 days is what I hear is their sort of average life cycle above the ground as adults. So um, they come out for two reasons. They come out to eat and they come out to procreate. So they're out there to, to mate. And so they're not usually alone. They come in big numbers and they tend to congregate in those areas where they have attractive foods. They know those attractive foods by the smell of them. And so roses smell like good food to them. Um, so do geraniums. And we'll get back to geraniums in just a second here. One more quick note on, just on the ID of Japanese beetles is that in Japan, where they come from, they're not a serious pest. They, uh, they cause a little bit of damage, but their environment is well balanced to the Japanese beetle. Here in North America, we have to take some measures to try to control them because we just don't have an environment that's well balanced to their annual emergence and then uh, disappearance under the ground again. So now I wanted to talk about uh, how to control them as adults in that 40 day period that they're above the ground. Um, and then please hang out because I wanna to talk to you about how to control them in their other stage, that grub stage, because you have 11 months of the year where you can control them in the grub stage and it might be easier to, or better for you to control them when they're under the ground and not uh, attacking your shrubs than waiting until you see them as adults. So your Japanese beetle have been living under the ground in the grub stage for 11 months. They emerge as small adults. And as small adults early on, they stick close to the ground, chewing up things uh, just in that bottom layer because they're not really big and they're not flying around long distances. This is a great opportunity for you to determine how bad your infestation will be this year. And their favoriteest food in the world, the thing that they go gaga over, is the geranium or the zonal geranium. Also, a, I guess you could call it a pelargonium botanically. Um, if you have these zonal geraniums in your garden in big numbers, in the time that they're expected to emerge, so let's say in June and July, that's a great way for you to know how bad your infestation is going to be uh, because they will congregate on those geraniums. The other thing that those geraniums will do, and it's kind of a funny irony, uh, their, their favorite food in the world also paralyzes them. So when they go and eat the, the flowers of the zonal geranium, uh, they will actually fall over and be stunned for a period of time. Um, this will make them very susceptible to predators. So having a large number of the zonal geraniums gives you that opportunity to make them more vulnerable to predators. You can also shake them off into a bucket of soapy water and that will kill them. So this is your first line of monitoring and defense. Have those zonal geraniums in your garden in large numbers in June and July. If, you have, if you've seen Japanese beetle damage in the past, uh, you kind of know they're on their way. This is a great way to head them off at the pass and get a good idea of what it will look like uh, when they emerge higher and start attacking your shrubs like roses. So once they're on the roses, what can you do about them? Well, of course, you know, anything that you spray uh, can be a big damage to 
all of the insects around. And I know uh, desperate times call for desperate measures, but there is a way around this. Uh, there is a bacterial agent that you can spray uh, onto your roses and onto your susceptible shrubs called BTG or uh, Bacillus uh, bacteria that gets into the guts of the Japanese beetle as they eat and it kills them. So it's very targeted. It's targeted to the pests that are eating your plants and the only the beetle pests that are eating your plants. So you don't end up killing off all of their predators, which would be a bad thing. Uh, so you actually just target the pest. So this is the number one way I would say. Um, there's, I think it's called Beetle Gone is the product I've seen it marketed under. Has that BTG in it. I'll put that up on the screen. And if you get that, that's gonna be your number one line of defense for, for killing off the adult beetles. The other way you can do it is you can spray down some neem oil. It works similarly, but it won't kill the adults. It'll just stop them from breeding. So I guess that's a good way of uh, addressing their population over a length of time. But immediately, I'm pretty sure you want to protect your shrubs. And to do that, you'll want to kill the adults. I'm going to give you one more piece of advice here, and it's just a matter of uh, addressing your patience level and uh, a practice of disbudding your roses. So obviously they're attracted to the roses because of the floral scent. If you know from your geranium trap that they're gonna have a big infestation of the Japanese beetle, it might make sense for you to disbud your roses in the coming weeks. Remember, they're only out there for a total of 40 days, the first 10 of which they're staying close to the ground. So you have 30 days basically from the time that they start uh, going upwards on the shrubs to disbud your roses, limit the amount of damage, and then at the time that they finish, they're, they're all gone, they've laid their eggs, they're under the ground, uh, then you can just let your roses continue blooming or resume blooming and you'll get the whole rest of the season. So uh, instead of being something that you get so disheartened about that you've lost your roses for, for uh, and they've damaged your roses, just understand going in that you're gonna have your roses up to uh, June or July. As soon as you see the damage start to emerge, the big uh, uh, influx of adults, you start disbudding your roses and then you can have them from you know August onwards and have no problem with your roses. Now let's talk about the Japanese beetle in their grub stage and this is really important because they are primarily a pest of lawn and turf. So 11 months out of the year that's where they're living and this is a great time to address them because they are defenseless to you. So remember in that June July period they're up as adults, they lay their eggs into the lawn and sometime in the range of September, October in the fall, and then of course in the early spring as well, you're going to see damage uh, all over that patch of lawn. You're going to see the damage of the grubs, the, the feeding damage on the roots causes brown patches in the lawn. And you also may see that birds are starting to peck and cause damage trying to go after those grubs. So they're sitting there defenseless. You can apply measures to them right now. They're going to cause them not to emerge as adults that you have to chase around the garden. So uh, while they're there, there are two traditional biological defenses. The first one is nematodes. So you water nematodes into the lawn. Uh, the botanical or the scientific names of these are heterohabditis and uh, Steiner Nema. I'll put those up on the screen so you don't have to remember them. I think I've seen them in a product uh, formulated called Lawn Guardian, but there's probably other formulations out there as well. That heterohabditis and Steiner Nema are just little worms that will find their way into the bodies of the grubs underground and kill them before they emerge. Uh, the other one is the same bacteria I talked about putting onto the foliage of your plants. It's that BTG, but it's in a formulation that's granular that would go onto your lawn. I think that one's called uh, Grub Be Gone or Grub Gone. Uh, and again, either one of these formulations are both biological controls that are very, very targeted just at the beetle grubs. So they're not going to go and poison a whole bunch of the life in underneath your lawns. They're just really focused on those, those beetle grubs. All right, that's all I have for you today on the Japanese beetle. I hope these measures are of some use to you. I know some people have been really, really disheartened by the kind of damage they see by Japanese beetle. But if you take a few of these measures, you should be able to either eliminate or minimize the amount of damage you see in your garden. And if you have any questions about this, please drop those down below the video. I'll see what I can do to help.